this video, I will go through all the various phases of work involved in building my latest project, IO Aliejo. From the planning phase in SketchUp, prototyping the sound on the breadboard, to sawing and drilling and sanding, soldering, and in the end, assembling the final product. I always start by sketching out some general ideas on paper, which includes the characteristics and scope of the sounds to be produced, as well as a rough idea of how the finished work will take shape physically. Having reached the point on the breadboard with the sound I'm comfortable moving on with, I draw the schematics and keycut and proceed to figure out how I will lay out the electronic components on the model in SketchUp. It will generally take several attempts to fit everything in a logical and practical way to accommodate the circuit. In the model, I also draw the power and signal buses, marking them with their respective code names from the circuit schematics. When I'm happy with the layout and looks of the model, I make drill maps for every surface that needs to be drilled in. I do this by checking the data sheets of the angle brackets I use and I line them up with the two surfaces I want to fasten together. With all the paperwork done, I can now saw all the acrylic glass sheets to their correct dimensions using a table saw. Having tried a few different types of blades, I stuck with a 24 teeth alternating top bevel blade with a raker. Although a triple chip grind blade leaves a nicer finish, I always get problems with chipping at the end of the cut with the particular TCG blade that I have. As you can see, the results are fairly average, but it doesn't matter because we will sand the edges later. I cut my printed out drill maps to size with a sharp knife and a ruler. I generally allow myself half a millimeter of imprecision during the course of a build, and this is where I expect most of that allowance to go to waste. When I'm done with the cutting, I tape the pieces of paper to their respective acrylic glass surfaces and take them to the drill press. Some of the bigger holes will be cut using a jigsaw, as I don't have hole saws in all the necessary sizes. This goes especially for the hole needed to fit the speaker, which is about 10 cm in diameter, and the socket where I will mount the vacuum tube. I use split point drills instead of the chisel pointed ones. This makes it unnecessary to punch holes prior to drilling, which again speeds up the process and increases precision. I generally don't need to use any cooling fluid when the drills are sharp, but regular tap water is sufficient enough if things get too hot. This is the hole I need to saw with a jigsaw to fit the speaker. There are special blades for acrylic glass out there, but I haven't found them to be particularly useful for sawing curves, so I'm just gonna use a metal blade here. I didn't expect the speaker to fit on the first try, and it didn't. I will stick a grinding bit in my drill press and even out the rough spots until it fits. Now that it does fit, I will cut out a slot in one of the walls of the speaker enclosure so that I can run my signal and power bus through to the inside where I keep my amplifier, regulators and DC to DC converters. A 
this point it's time to put everything together and check if the acrylic surfaces fit and if the drill holes are where they are supposed to be. I'm making sure that I can fit all the bolts through the holes and if the holes line up with the brackets. After that I will check the acoustics of the speaker enclosure by using sounds from the breadboard. I like to keep the breadboard and circuit intact until the project is finished for cases like this. Or if there should be something wrong in the schematic that I need to double check later. To attach the wires and buses to surfaces, I like to use perf board with pin headers to line everything up perfectly. I'm sewing the perf boards to a size determined by the amount of wires I'm planning to attach to it, meaning the amount of signals in any bus. It's a surprising amount of work for something nobody will ever notice. I will sew the perf board by hand, grind the edges, and then color them with a the permanent marker. I'm using an old Soviet grinder from 1975, and I think the grinding wheel is equally old. I use a permanent marker to color the perf board. You can also use spray paint, but I find it difficult to cover the edges without using too much paint. While sanding the edges of the acrylic, I make sure to go gently on the side that will touch other surfaces so that I don't skew the dimensions and make a loose fit. I will be more thorough on the visible edges to make them look better, so I'm using 60 grit sandpaper to get rid of all the snags from the table saw. on the inside of the speaker enclosure, so in order to diffuse the light I'm going to sand each visible surface still using 60 grit sandpaper. This gives the acrylic a nice milky semi-transparent character. I have other plans for the little piece of acrylic I will mount the vacuum tube to. Here I'm going up to 1200 grit. I'm going to use a heat gun to polish the edges until they are transparent. It's handy to have a slab of concrete or any other heat resistant material under the workpiece. You can also use a flame torch to polish the acrylic, but I don't have one right now. It should be halfway possible to see the difference on the camera. Having put everything back together again, I will just make some minor adjustments, which I mark by putting an arrow in the direction I need the hole to be widened. After correcting the minor annoyances, we have gotten to the soldering part. I'm starting by soldering the pin headers to the perf board that will hold everything in place. I'm continuing by soldering together the scaffolding with 14 American wire gauge tinned copper wire. They'll make for a rigid enough construction to solder components to, but they're also acting as common ground across the entire circuit. Next I'm soldering the signal and power bus that allows the circuitry on the inside of the speaker enclosure to communicate with the external circuitry, such as the ESP32, a voltage controlled filter and a PT2399 delay chip. These wires are 18AWG tinned copper that I have straightened using a drill. And likewise I will solder the auxiliary buses on the scaffolding that partially will interconnect with the main bus. One of the two sides of the scaffolding will contain the analog circuitry, and the other side will contain a hybrid of digital and analog, such as the delay effect and digital to analog converters. 
Here I have already mounted the ESP32 and I'm connecting it to the hybrid auxiliary bus with a 20 AWG wire. I generally like to pre-solder everything so that I can temporarily fasten things on one end until I get both hands free to solder them properly. If it's ever possible to pre-assemble some parts before you solder them to the scaffolding, then that's a bonus. When soldering something to a bus wire that has already been soldered on both ends, the bus wire will bend by the increased temperature from the soldering iron. I mitigate this by re-soldering one of the end joints while the wire is still hot and it will snap back into place. Off camera I already soldered the circuitry on the inside of the speaker enclosure. I didn't solder it in the freeform style since nobody will ever see it. On the black PCB there is a bridged amplifier, a couple of voltage regulators and a charge pump to convert plus 12 volts to minus 12 volts for the negative rail. Here I am soldering the auxiliary buses to the main bus. After this I won't be able to deattach the modules from each other, so from this point on it's permanent. Having connected everything in the circuit, I'm finishing the scaffolding on the top of the sculpture. The intention of this was to have some extra support for the circuitry on the side to make it safer to transport. This is the very last solder joint of the sculpture. Now I'm just gonna check if everything works. Let me know.